breaking Please. news That's alert on the show. The police, we have though. the Sixers NBA Cup schedule in front of us. I don't know that Devon and Derek have seen this I yet. I have not looked at it. Derek, have you looked at it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it out. that's no fun. <laughs> All I right. stayed away from it. Here is this is schedule. the official group play schedule for your Philadelphia 76ers. Tuesday, November 12th, at home against the Knicks mm. on TNT. Friday, November 15th, so three days later, at the Orlando Magic. Mm. One week later, Friday, November 22nd, home versus the Brooklyn Nets. Tuesday, December 3rd, to finish it off at the Charlotte Hornets. And that is your, your so official the, group play schedule. So I think that was... The block looks like two wins, should be two wins. Yeah. The first two are where the questions will lie. I would say they got New York at home, but as we found out, Knicks Doesn't fans matter. travel well, so I'm not sure how much that <laughs> Sell matters. Sell out the buildings, uh, center. Sell it out. Sell it out. Yeah, I think Brooklyn and Charlotte didn't really matter where you play them. You probably would have preferred to just get Orlando at home and hope to win three out of the but four. But we thought the same thing about Indiana until Indiana turned out to be the eventual Eastern Conference representative for the Cup when the Sixers played them in that in that pool play. The tough part to evaluate is we don't know what the surrounding schedule is. I will say it's a little bit interesting. We know they opened the season against Milwaukee. We know that now Chris Haynes reported earlier today, November 6th, they play the LA Clippers in LA. So they're back home six days after that against the Knicks. What is that in between period look and like? Is that, like, is that coming back? off of yeah. a, a long West Coast road trip or a long road trip in general? Let's say it's four. Let's say it's four games out there. Yeah, that's that's a normal significant. You gotta West hope Coast that there's a, a buffer game coming back. And you get where, your bearings. And where and are the Knicks? Are the Knicks coming yes. from home? Or where where are they? That, so that's that's an interesting one. And ideally, you would look at that just right now and say you want you would like to see them go. 4-0 to make sure that they find themselves in that play to go to Las Vegas to, to play there. But one one loss could hurt you in, in that specific type of tournament that they that the NBA has now put together. Did did you all eventually like it at the end of it last year? Did you, I wasn't here yeah, with you guys. I, so. I went from I, went, I mean, I don't think it let's say it still doesn't have a ton of significance in terms of you're not adding to your legacy by winning the NBA Cup, No, no, right? it's just more of what your thoughts were but, about the Cup and beforehand, seeing it, and then seeing how it yeah, played out. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it was just goofy marketing hype. And look, that's basically what it is, right? They're just trying to generate some more interest and money in the regular season. But I do think as they got deeper into it, you could see the players cared about it that were still left in it or had a chance to – to go to Las Vegas and compete. We got some really good early regular season games out of it. And so for me, who I'm going to watch every regular season game regardless, if you can add just like a little bit of extra incentive, mm -hmm. my only request is that they please don't do that bright red court for the yeah, Sixers no, the again because go. that was painful on my eyes and I didn't like it. But other than that, I, it's fine. It, the worst... The worst case scenario is you play one extra game in the season and you lose the championship. Yeah, I think I, I wouldn't say I was down on it, but I was dismissive of it last year. And I'm still like Kyle, I'm not gonna we're like we're not throwing a parade for any in season tournament winner. You're not going to, it's not gonna impact your legacy. I do think it picked up the quality of play in November and I don't want meaningful, not incredibly substantial, but like if it increases the competitive level five to ten percent then i'm all on board uh, i'm not gonna make a big deal out of it but i do think it is i think it helped now to kyle's point the courts please don't just awful. please don't you tried it awful didn't work move on they're not gonna move on they're no, not they're, not. I know. they're going to but draw like, as much again. attention that is as the they one can thing i will it. complain about but i do think it picked up the level of play more than i was expecting it to i was dismissive also and uh was like who asked for this and Adam Silver asked for it. But so as it played out, though, and we got to watch it, and especially when some teams lost, like the Sixers lost, it started to give other teams hope and belief that they could actually move on to this cup. Then the money came into play where you feel you feel like, hey, we're here. We're in the mix. We might as well play hard and get there, see what it's like. And the competition was pretty good with the Pacers, the Lakers, 
how how all of that played out. The Pelicans, once they got there, they they got blown out. But uh, the Pelicans also, I can't remember who the Pacers played, but and that was a truly low moment for Zion. That was by bad. the way, he was, was really absolutely bad. slaughtered yeah. for how he looked during that uh, in season tournament. Game. Right. So, um, but I, I learned to respect it a little bit more as it played out. Now let's see if they have the same type of approach this year. If anything changes, if they change, the courts are going to be the same, but are they going to have different designs where they're not so we need your shady rays to watch a basketball game? But um, overall, we got plenty of them. You we know have what plenty saying? of them, and you got some discount, of course, codes to help you out if you need them for the courts. But I, I, I did like it as it eventually went through the whole thing. Indiana played well. Los Angeles, it didn't matter for them because they just. That was their peak right right there uh, at that point. But it was okay. It was okay. A little bit. It was more competitive than I expected it to be. So we'll see what it does. And we'll see. I mean, heck, we're going to watch it. We want to see if the Sixers take it seriously and take it seriously enough to get there, get some extra money for those younger players that don't make that much money, and see if that can then catapult them into even more stronger play as they continue to go along. That was what was cool, I think, for a team like Indiana, where it was a lot of younger guys on that team that – bunch of them were not making tons of money they were clearly invested in they bought in from the very beginning like we we're going to go hard and try to advance as far as we can in this tournament while some teams are just like well we don't know the tiebreakers like there yeah. there were coaches and players getting mad about uh score padding at the end of games yep. when that was a tiebreaker and so that became a big point of conversation point of argument uh, i would say look, as the only soccer guy on the show who follows the these tournaments overseas that they have the the mid-season stuff that's ongoing alongside the regular season i don't think it's ever going to take on like a real life so the best way i could describe it to you is in english premier league they have two different just for england two different cups next to the season in the country and if you just win one of those nobody cares it's one of those that like you make the final and people get very excited for the final and then if you lose it it's like okay we lost if you win it it only actually gains significance if you also won something else so if you right. won the english premier league if you won champions League, because them. then it's like yeah. we won the double we won the treble and that becomes part of the the story of the season if you only win that it's just like ah, eh, you won this rinky dink right. like mid-season tournament and i think that's generally how it will probably go in the nba as well i do think it will gain the league really just cares about they want to make more money sure which is really what's all that's going to come out of this is there'll be more national tv games more revenue streams more ads whatever that's fine. Like if that helps make the overall product better in some meaningful way for fans, then great. But I don't think there are very few people, maybe some of those sickos are in here today who are going to be like, man, I, I, I need them to win the Emirates NBA Cup or the season has no meaning. I just I don't think that'll ever be the case. Who won, it was the Lakers won it last year, right? Yes. yes. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives right. a shit. Now, if the Lakers had done that, and, and they won the title. Then Laker. it becomes like, oh, LeBron's the first ever to win. <laughs> like, and LeBron probably did look at it as we were the first. I was the first Prime. guy to ever win the NBA Cup, and Remember, he's probably thinking of it in that in way. The locker room. They were going well. after it. Right, you're going to celebrate <laughs> yeah. it. It's still a, an achievement. I'm not saying that. Like, I'm glad that they took it seriously. I would like every game to be taken seriously as it can be, mm -hmm. even if it's the regular season. I'm just being realistic about. Like, and the other thing with the cups in England or Spain or Italy or wherever, most of those, the domestic ones, those are the games that you see the, like the academy kids, the kids who are like 17, 18, they're given the, the starters, the first team arrest so that they can play in the real game. So that's the other thing that I think kind of gets lost in trying to bring this concept from overseas into the NBA. Mm -hmm. Silly like the mayor.